what's going on guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX, looking all smart today with my glasses on. Um, today's Friday, January 4th, 2019, first Friday of the month. Anybody tuning in this video who's never seen these videos before, I'm a professional foreign currency trader and analyst. I make these videos every week going over the prior trading week, what happened, what's going on, top performing pairs, what setups we were looking at, as well as I dive into the following week, next week coming up, what we're looking at, what setups are on our radar, uh, what to look out for. And things like that. It's basically your one-stop shop to get you ready for the week ahead and Forex to get you ready for what happened the prior week and really just position yourself to succeed in the next week. Um, all my returning viewers, thank you guys. As always, I love you all. Couldn't thank you enough for the support. Really means a lot. We got a lot of big things going on here this year with CoreFX 2019. Whole new website, updating the whole course, launching all kinds of new products. Really excited for it. But I'm going to go ahead, guys, and jump into this week's breakdown. We had a lot of crazy things happen this week. Uh, it was a slow week. We had a holiday um, on Tuesday, so it was a little bit of a broken up week. Start to the new year. NFP jobs today. We had a flash crash across the currency marks. A lot of awesome stuff we're going to cover in today's video. If you guys like what you see, please smash the like button below. Please hit subscribe. Turn on your notifications so every time I drop a video, you guys are notified. This year, I'm taking YouTube to a whole nother level. I'm going to be redoing my entire office sometime in the next coming month or two. Um, really going to up the quality of the content. Really going to start coming out with more stuff. And just providing as much free material as I can for all you guys. All right, so thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Again, leave any comments below if you like what you see, you want to see something different, anything like that. Please feel free to like the, the video. This the most support you could give me. Share it with your friends. Really appreciate it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and dive in the charts. I'll catch you all in there. All right, guys. So starting off here with one of my favorite tools, we have the uh, relative performance, the currency strength weakness indicator here. Um, basically what this is, is it is a chart showing us each individual currency and how it's performed over a given time period. I have it set to the weekly here because we're breaking down this prior week. As you guys can see, CAD, Yen, Aussie, top three performers of the week. We had a little bit of a bounce in oil. We had strong Canadian dollar employment report. Uh, we had risk on, risk off going on here with the Japanese Yen. We've seen a crazy increase in the Yen over the past few weeks. And we also have some strength out of Aussie New Zealand, which is rare to be matched up with Japanese yen. But um, later part of this week, we've been seeing some strength returning to the equity market. So we've seen a little bit more of that um, you know, risk coming into the market. But we have our bottom performers as the euro, Swiss franc, US dollar, uh, and then the pound New Zealand, again, kind of right here in the middle. So um, nothing too drastic or crazy going on around a 1.8% uh, move. That's, that's pretty normal for currency markets. We had some crazy crazy volatility going on around the middle of the week with the flash crash that we saw across the board but that's not really um showing up here on the overall performance because those losses or gains whatever they were in whichever direction with either pair were quickly recovered and um so that's not really going to be calculated here so this is just overall relative strength performance as a trend trader um which is what i do i like to pair up strong cares versus versus weak currencies to give us that inverted relation to give us the strongest probability for good setups, strong setups, nice trades, right? So we want to look to pin up strong currencies against weak currencies, and that will give us our greatest return. Um, so that's what we saw this week. Next week, we'll look to try to piggyback this into the following week. We'll look to ride this strength in the CAD, Yen, Aussie, and we'll look to try to short and catch this weakness out of the dollar, Swiss franc, and euro. So real quick this week, we had a really slow start to the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, really nothing going on at all. Markets were closed, periods as well. Then we had Thursday, we had uh, PMI numbers um, out of the U.S. first, which were a little weaker than expected, and then out of China, which were decent numbers. And then today, Friday, we had NFP, which gave us very strong reading from the U.S. We had uh, 312,000 jobs created in the month of December, as opposed to an estimate of 1 179,000. Massive job creation there. Hourly earnings jumped up to a tenth of a percentage point. From 0.3% expectation to 0.4%. It was prior 0.2%. So that's a nice strong jump in average hourly earnings. So not only are more jobs being created, but hot wages are going up. That is a very, very important thing that our economy needs right now. And then we also have the unemployment rate ticked a little bit higher to 3.9%, but we are still at full employment. We're still a very, very strong job market right now. So these are things we want to keep an eye on into the next week. Maybe we'll see the dollar gain some strength off this, or maybe it will continue to get crushed. So starting over here with the U.S. dollar on the indexes, these are going to be um, this quick section. I'm going to break down each individual currency's index and how that individual currency is performing. And this is the U.S. dollar chart. As you guys can see, we were in a nice uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. 
retest to the higher low, retest to the higher high, and we've just been range bound, right? So since this higher high here, not this one, but this one here, and this higher low here, we have been in a range, right? Between about $96 and $97.50, we've been range bound. Price hits the ceiling, sells off. Hits the floor, buys, sells off, rallies, right? So what we have going on now with this orange box is a pretty significant technical indicator that I'm seeing. We have the 20 SMA crossing below the 50 SMA, right? Price is now moving lower. It made a lower low in, uh, in respects to this prior higher low that we made here, but it's still respecting this overall strong support from this in initial market move, right? So we didn't make any new higher highs since this higher low, so this is going to be remaining as the higher low. However, we did break down below this support here, came up to retest this strong daily trend line, rejected initially. So we'll see if this 50 SMA and trend line are able to hold and the dollar, if the dollar breaks the support, this could lead us to a strong sell off from the dollar and really a trend reversal that has already started to take place here with this uh, rounding top that we've got forming here, right? So this could be a triple top pattern here. It also is a rounding top and an inverted cup and handle if we get a little bit of a handle forming here. And this looks like the dollar's getting ready to roll over. Euro here, um, as you guys can see, we've basically been in an ascending triangle, which is typically a bullish continuation pattern. But we've been in a downtrend, and since this lower low and this lower high, price has been range bound with the euro as well. We've got a little bit of an ascending trend line on the bottom, and resistance is holding steady here, as this is the top of the ascending triangle. We got the ascending trend line here, the top of the triangle holding, and this is a wedge, right? We're wedging out in between these two. What we want to do is wait for a break to one side or the other. We thought we might have had it here initially, but it came back in. So that's what we want to see. Wait for a break in either direction to give us confirmation the euro is ready to move. But again, this looks like it's starting to roll over to an uptrend as well. We're starting to um, you know, get higher lows coming in here. We've now broken above the 50 SMA. The 20s crossing above the 50 SMA. So we're starting to get these technical indicators. However, first and foremost, we need to see, just like with the dollar, this major structure broken. This red box here needs to be broken before we can continue consider this to be any kind of a trend reversal. Japanese yen before the holidays and before we took off break taking these videos for a little while, you guys saw we were in this wedge pattern down here on strong weekly support, bouncing around, and then we had on December 19th a break of this trend line, a break of this wedge pattern, and look what price did afterwards. Exploded, right? We came all the way up to this strong level 89, this strong psychological resistance level. We could throw a little bar in here to show you guys where. Prices hit that and rejected now. Now we would just want to be looking for buy the dip opportunities in the yen. Look for pullbacks. Price is massively extended right now. We are very far from the moving averages. This is the 20 moving average, which is a short term fast moving average. And you can see price is extremely far from it. So we want to wait for a correction. We want to wait for price to come back to us. We want to wait for that mean reversion before we get in long. But this is a good opportunity now that we have reverse trends and have shown strong direction to the upside. Now is a good opportunity. We want to start looking for dips to buy in the Japanese yen. British pound, not much really happening. Still bouncing around this weekly support. Bounce below it, then immediately broke back up above it. And now we're just pretty much bouncing around. We are technically still in a downtrend. We are still setting lower lows and lower highs. We are still under the 50 SMA, 50, 20s below the 50s, below the 200. So technically speaking, we are still in a nice downtrend. However, we want to keep an eye. We're starting to see some bullish come into this, some bullish momentum come into this. We want to keep an eye here and see what price does. But for now, we are still bearish, just not really looking for any plays in the pound. The pound's been extremely volatile lately. It's kicked me out of almost every trade I've tried making on it. So I'm going to step back from the pound most likely for a little while and let it play out. But I just still want to show you guys what's going on as well. Canadian dollar, we had a very strong sell-off to the downside, a very strong lower low. Price has now bounced this week. As you can see with these gapping days, we've had a very, very strong momentum coming into the CAD. And today that momentum continued on strong employment report. Now we're coming up to a nice area to look for shorts. Right, we're in a downtrend, same thing we just saw. Lower lows, lower highs, 20 below the 50, below the 200, price below the 50, they're all sloping downward. Beautifully, technically, downtrend, right? So we wanna be looking for short opportunities. Now, that being said, fundamentally, there's a lot of stuff giving some power back to the CAD, giving some hope back to the CAD. However, um, we are watching this uh, sell zone up top here to look for potential shorting of this pair to the downside. So that's what we'll be watching here. Swiss franc is moving up nicely um, in this uh, channel here. As you guys can see, we're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. 
in a nice channel. We've broken above strong support. We've got now the 20s above the 50 SMA. They're both curling upward. We're still trading below the 200, but that's more of our long-term moving average. So on the shorter term, we are in an uptrend now. Uh, we want to be looking for long opportunities in this pair. Just want to wait for the right opportunity. This hasn't been the nicest uptrend. As you guys can see, this has been a very choppy whipsaw move to the upside. However, <coughs> maybe once we break this 200 SMA in this channel, we can continue higher with some nice stronger pushes. Now moving on to the Aussie dollar. As you guys can see, we've been in a strong sell-off. Price hit this weekly support down here and has now rallied. Very strong momentum bounce off it. We hit a weekly level. Price usually responds pretty strong to them. So we have bounced very strongly off this weekly level. But we are still in a downtrend. 20 below 50 SMA, curling under. They're both below the 200, setting lower lows, lower highs. So we want to be looking for a short opportunity, maybe up around this 72 psychological resistance, prior support. 50 SMA, I'll be right around it. So that could be good in an area to look for short, but we might find resistance at 71.50 before we even get to that point. That takes us on to our New Zealand dollar. As you guys can see, this pair has been selling off as well. We hit this very strong 66 support resistance level that we've seen in the past. Sorry about that, guys. Finviz has these stupid ads, but we've seen this in the past, right? This support resistance area multiple times has been respected. Price moved lower, hit that, and bounced very hard. A lot of this has been... Um, you know, that risk on coming back to the markets with people starting to have more risk with the U.S. equities performing better. So money's been coming to the New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar. That has had a lot of factor to do with this, but we are bouncing and switching it to the weekly. You can see this rejection candle, right? This hammer candle we're forming on this strong area that is showing us an initial rejection of it. So we had a downtrend, then we had a push to the upside, set a new higher high trend changing. We've now pulled back a bit and looks like price could be moving to the upside again from here. Alrighty, so next on our list is the S&P 500. As you guys can see, we have started to reverse trend. We had a sell-off, consolidation, sell-off. We're now rallying. This could just be a pullback. We could come back up to this support turn resistance up here. Continue to sell off. As you can see, 20 SMAs below the 50 SMA, below the 200, all sloping downwards, setting lower lows, lower highs. Technically sound for a downtrend. So we want to keep an eye on this. We want to see what price does, well, how we react to this level here. But... From a technical analyst standpoint, we want to be looking for shorts in this in this chart, right? We want to be shorting the S&P 500 based off of the technicals on this chart. Gold, just the opposite. We are in an uptrend. We're now above the 50, uh, the 200 SMA and the 20 and the 50. The 200 is starting to curl upwards. These two are both sloping upwards. We're setting strong higher highs, higher lows. We're hitting a resistance here, pulling back a little. But gold is now in the position where I would say buy the dips because this looks like a very strong uptrend technically, and this is when we want to be looking to buy all the dips and try to ride this trend strongly higher. Finally, we have oil. As you guys can see, we had been getting crushed all through October, November, December, even January. Uh, I mean, all through December, sorry, and then into January here, we are starting to rally. This could just be a pullback, right? We have, are seeing a strong bounce. It hit weekly support down here. We had a nice bullish engulfing pattern. We are rallying off here. If we throw Fibonacci on from the last move, swing high to the bottom of this swing low, we're right around the 50 fib now, and then the 618 is right on prior structure. So the 618 is where I'd be more confident to see a reversal. However, we are still starting to see rejection. It is on the 20 SMA, and in a very strong downtrend like this, usually the pullbacks are small and minimized before price continues to the downside. So we could continue to see oil get crushed and move to the downside. All right, so this brings us over to the U.S. dollar crosses, starting with the euro dollar. As you guys can see here, uh, we were in a pennant pattern. We did break out of that, but we are still range bound below this resistance, right? So we had a lower low, lower high, lower low, retest lower high, higher low, retest lower high, higher low, retest lower high, higher low, right? So if we take this guy out of here, what that gives us is an ascending triangle. Right? Similar to what the euro just showed us. We have a ceiling holding steady, an ascending trend line underneath of it. We are in an ascending triangle. This is typically a bullish continuation pattern, right? Usually in an uptrend, we see this form under resistance. The highs are closing in and then pop, we break to the upside. However, we're seeing this on support. This shows me the opposite. This shows me a reversal. This shows me this resistance breaking could be a very strong move to the upside. However, we can't discount the potential of this selling off. We do have moving averages reversing, rounding out 
20 cross and above the 50. This could be moving to the upside. However, um, we got to keep our minds open and our bias open as this could break out either direction. And that's what we want to be anticipating. Pound dollar, uh, really sloppy price action, but we are still in this downtrend. Price is pulled back. We are hitting this resistance here now. Um, we made a lower low, lower high, and then we based around a little bit and kind of made a higher high. Sloppy price action though came up, hit the 50 SMA, sold off. Flash crash, shot the US dollar higher, pulled the pound lower here, this big rejection wick, and is now pushing higher again. Um, so really nothing crazy going on with this pair. I'm not really watching for anything in particular Dollar CAD very strong break above now pulling back two, uh, three days in a row strong sell-off We got oil recovering as well as the Canadian dollar very strong um, Jobs data And as you can see that's leading to a sell-off here. This is a buy zone If you want to get in on a pullback in this uptrend, it's a very strong sell-off right now So we'd have to wait for confirmation the sell-offs over However, um, this is the region down here where we'd be looking for long opportunities. Dollar yen, crushed. Look at this crazy, crazy move this week. From the beginning of the week to the end of the week, thousands of pips. Um, as you guys can see, very strong sell-off. Hit a bit of a daily support here now. Um, not really looking for a trade on this one again either. However, the trade to me would be looking for shorting opportunities You know, in a number of these areas of resistance. You got one here at 109.50 if it goes higher you've got one up here at 110 um, really just would be looking for pullbacks uh, rallies within this downtrend to then short it and continue lower dollar swiss ugly chart as well uh, sitting here on support just kind of bouncing around we've got strong sell-off strong rally strong sell-off strong rally strong sell-off strong rally so uh, really ugly price action again another pair I'm not looking to trade this US dollar has been unpredictable all over the place Waiting for cleaner market conditions before I look to trade that. Aussie dollar, US dollar, a little bit closer to what I would like to see. You know, we were in a downtrend, then we reversed to an uptrend. Now we're back into the downtrend. Hit strong weekly support. Bounced up. I'm ignoring this wick because this was a flash crash. This is not really something I'm that worried about, um, technically speaking. Um, but this is bouncing up higher now. Look for it to find resistance up here. Setting this lower high and then roll over to continue to the downside. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, um, set a lower low, selling off. In the signal room, we caught a nice short on New Zealand dollar, US dollar with this break lower here. Price pulled back um, and is now coming up to retest this 50 SMA. Could set up a good opportunity for shorts. Could be a nice um, pullback opportunity here to get short. So we'll be keeping an eye on that pair for sure. Um, other than that, pairs I'm watching for the coming week, Pound Aussie. I like this uptrend now. Broke above all the moving averages, set new higher highs, higher lows, has now pulled back, retesting strong support, uh, resistance turn support on the 200 day SMA. So we'll be looking for long opportunities there. Pound New Zealand, similar story, you know, we reverse trend. You could throw a trend line here, even though it's pretty steep. Um, but here's a trend line, reversed it, broke structure, new higher high, higher low, broke 50 SMA, pulling back. Look for a potential short, I mean, long opportunity after that pullback, as well as an inverted head and shoulders pattern. If this correction happens, that could be our right shoulder. So we will certainly be keeping an eye on that happening as well and looking for long opportunities in this pound New Zealand, pound CAD. Uh, we were in a very nice range. Price broke out. Looked like we could have continued up at the upside a lot higher. Um, price did pull back. It's now finding support 50 SMA 618 fib from this move if you drag fib from the bottom to the top of this move It's pulled back to the 618. I'll show you real quick This is the start of that move To the top of this wick is the end of that move as you can see price is pulled back and rejected this 618 fib Price has not been able to close below it. It's on the 50% I mean the 50 day moving average And we're getting a little bit of a hammer candle slash indecision candle here so we will be looking for long opportunities potentially on this pair. Euro New Zealand, another one. Reverse trend, broke the moving average, 200 asked to act as resistance, but it's now selling off. Could retest this higher low. Could wrap around 50-day SMA, retest that, and potentially continue higher. Euro CAD, another one. Strong higher high. Has now pulled back. I don't like this one as much because this is a very momentous pullback. It's not just a little pullback. This is a very strong sell-off. And I'm sure if we take it to the weekly, 
yep, we got a bearish engulfing. Not a good sign. So um, I'll be keeping an eye on this one, but most likely will not be trading it. Aussie, dollar, Swiss, franc. Bounce off strong weekly here. Strong bullish push. Probably a weekly reversal here as well. Yeah, a little bit of uh, bullish engulfing. But another one, I'll be looking for price to rally potentially up to this resistance. Support. Strong zone. Now acting as resistance, potentially we rally up to that. Find uh, ceiling there and roll over and look for a potential short off that. And then we've got uh, New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc. So we've got a strong move to the downside. I'd like to see a pullback. We could throw Fibonacci on this whole move from all the way up here to all the way down here. And look at that. Our weekly resistance, our 200 day SMA, our 50 day SMA, and our 50% Fibonacci all line up right on this level here. And that would be a great opportunity for us to look for shorting opportunities for this pair. All right, so that does it for what I'm watching this week. Um, now, as far as news events go this coming week, we have a pretty loaded news events week. Starting off slow as usual. Sunday, nothing. Monday, at, at the uh, purchasing managers index out of the U.S., non-manufacturing, not really a big deal. Trade balance out of Canada and Australia. Um, some medium news events. And then we have Bank of Canada rate statement, massive meeting. Strong, strong volatility for the Canadian dollar. Hosting a press conference afterwards. We got Carney speaking out of the Bank of England on Wednesday as well. Then we have the meeting minutes recapping the December's rate hike out of the U.S. Federal Reserve. Very interested to see what they say, especially after that killer jobs report. We got Powell speaking afterwards. So um, that is definitely something I'll be looking forward to. And then we have a lot of uh, FOMC members speaking. And this is a very, very interesting year for the Federal Reserve in the U.S. You know, markets are talking uh, three hikes I mean two rate hikes potentially three um, we'll see about that I'm thinking more along the sides of one to two but um, very interesting very interesting they're very data dependent that has been a little bit mixed we had a very strong jobs report today Friday um, and we'll have to see what these members are thinking what they're seeing if their sentiments changing what's going on there Australian dollar then has retail sales decent mover strong GDP out of pound that's a very big market mover then they have their manufacturing production and then we have CPI inflation data out of the US on Friday morning which is another massive market mover so we have a lot going on this coming week in the markets definitely want to be keeping an eyes out for these news events and make sure we are setting up our trading plan around it but all in all guys uh, great week coming up ahead thank you guys again for tuning in this video if you're new to these videos I appreciate it Please subscribe and turn on notifications if you like what you see. You'll be notified every week when I wrap these videos as well as other videos as they come out. If you guys um, you know, want to recommend anything that I cover or anything you want me to go over in the next video, just leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get to it. Um, really appreciate it, guys. All my return viewers, again, thank you guys so much for the support. Can't thank you enough. Everything's because of you guys. Um, I'll continue to provide as best good content as I can. So thank you guys. I really hope everybody has an awesome weekend, a great trading week. I'm always accessible. You leave me comments. You can email me, Corey at corefxtrading.com. You can find me on Telegram, um, Instagram, core.fx, uh, all over the place. I'm everywhere on social media. So if you guys ever need to get a hold of me, feel free to get a hold of me. I um, appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great trading week. I'll catch you next time.